Hello everyone and welcome to a video tutorial uh, for the conservation of energy and uh, in this video tutorial we are going to focus on uh, applying this to uh, roller coasters. Um, so <clears throat> let's first get the conservation of energy equation uh, written out here. So I've got uh, my initial kinetic and potential energy and that is going to or plus my work done and that is going to equal my final kinetic and potential energy. Um, so, let's say that I uh, have a roller coaster that looks uh, something like this. Um, oh boy, that, no, that's, that's not what we need. Let's say I've got one that has a hill like this, it dips down, and then maybe like this, and then let's give it a um, let's give it a loop de loop like that, a really tight loop. Um, so this middle hump here, this is just a uh, camelback, and let's say that um, this top part here can be considered. Uh, part of a circle. And so let's say that this circle has a radius r. And um, yeah, and so what we can do is say, let's say that the cart starts here and it has no initial velocity. So, by the way, the bang sound you're hearing is Jude. Uh, he's working on something really important. So anyway, so let's say that I start from a certain height um, above here. Let's just say it's H. Okay. I know. I know. It doesn't look very good, Jude. Um, so I only start with potential energy. And let's say that for now, this track is frictionless. So when we're applying our conservation of energy, let's say that I want to know about this point right here. I'll call it point A. With that, the, uh, for the conservation of energy, the velocity at that point is the most crucial point for that section. Just like the velocity right here. Yeah, yeah. Just like the velocity right here at the top of this loop is the most important. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, <clears throat> with that, there are a couple things that we can apply. With this loop, this first loop, our force vectors are like this. I have gravity going down, and then I have normal force going up. Now, <clears throat> what's important here is that gravity is larger than our normal force. So if we're talking about point A, then I can first off utilize Newton's second law and apply centripetal acceleration. But with that, my normal force minus my weight is going to equal my mass. And then my acceleration vector is going to be negative V squared over R. Because weight is directed down and that's going to be the net force, which means that our acceleration is also directed down. Now, over here, um, my normal force and my weight are working with each other at point B. And so if I do the same thing, then I've got normal force directed down and weight directed down. So it's negative Fn minus Fg equals M times negative v squared over r, but all of those negatives just cancel out. So it leaves me with what I'd expect, the two forces working together to give me a centripetal acceleration. Now, oftentimes you'll be asked to find um, you know, minimum height or uh, max speed or something like that. When you're talking about a loop here, I'll call this loop one, and call this one loop two. When you're talking about loop one, you're dealing with a uh, 
maximum velocity because if you get velocity too high, it's just going to fly off of the track. If you think about getting velocity too low, well, that would kind of be impossible if you were talking about a frictionless track because this point is below this point. Exactly. And so you couldn't really slow down because you're below the point that you started, so you would still have kinetic energy. So with this problem, you would be finding out V max, which means you would be finding out the maximum height that this thing would need. Exactly. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about V2, you're generally talking about a minimum speed that you need to have going in. Because if you think about it, the faster you go into this loop, just the quicker you're going to get through it. So you can't really lose contact with the track the, the faster you go. Where you run into trouble is when you don't go fast enough and you don't make it all the way around. With either situation, set your normal force equal to zero. That will give you either a minimum speed for loop two or a maximum speed for loop one. You can then relate that back to using conservation of energy to figure out how high you would need to be, so on and so forth. Um, <clears throat> now, anytime they talk about work being introduced, the one of the most useful equations when you're dealing with a roller coaster, work it being the change in kinetic energy. Because oftentimes they will say, how much work is done to stop the car at point A? Well, you know your final kinetic energy is zero because your final, exactly, your final velocity is zero. So with that, anytime you're talking about friction and you're talking about a cart moving like this, friction or work is going to be negative. So this is just kind of a brief uh, run through of the physics of uh, roller coasters utilizing the conservation of energy.